Hi everyone, Mary and Espresso Press Design. Thank you for stopping by. I hope you're all doing well. Prayers to those in Mississippi and Tennessee and anyone else experiencing turmoil this pre-Easter season. Easter season. It's been um, distressing. Today I uh, have been playing around with um, someone asked about can you print with wax paper uh, and I was in my mind I wanted to try to see if I could do some batik techniques and full disclosure <laughs> you see the good and the fails so today i'm going to do some how the only fairly effective treatment i thought you could manage to transfer from wax paper and the best part about it is the um, beautiful prints that you can get on wax paper itself. I'm going to go over um, some of the things I've been doing with wax paper. This is one of the um, this technique I'm going to show you just glued onto a tag. I think it's um, lovely and of course you can't feel the texture. This is similar um, tissue paper, watercolor tissue glued onto wax paper embossed and then ink over the tissue to capture the ink. And excuse my hands, I've been rubbing over ink all morning. <laughs> um, <clears throat> this is another one where you can prevent the bleed and keep the color and not have the, the ink transfer off the wax paper. But I'll show you another way you can do that. A couple other ways you can avoid that problem. Here's another envelope tissue glued onto wax paper and then I lost my scores and um, was just trying to square it up. So I wouldn't say that is actually a success but it's just been um, <clears throat> Busy, busy, busy. <clears throat> Sorry. It's just been busy around here. Um, I have done this, laminated some labels. Very cool. Uh, you can poke a hole in there without having to worry about it tearing. Very cute. They actually bend kind of like vinyl. So that's another thing I did that I don't, a few of these things I just don't think warrant another video. So that's one of them. And then I doubled and tripled some wax paper and did some die cuts. They're similar to vellum, but they're also different. Double layer is better. Um, you can get a completely different effect. Whether, <clears throat> whether you crinkle the paper or not, 
Could get this on here and get it up here so I can show you. There, the birds are crinkled. It's probably not going to show up white on white, but the uncrinkled wax paper actually looks pearlescent, very pretty. The crinkled paper looks a little more matte, but to give them enough strength to go through the die cut and pop out easily, you definitely want to double or triple. And again, it's just a matter of making sure you use the right glue. So, I'm going to just demonstrate the transfer. I truthfully don't think you can. I'm going to include the link from Gina K on transferring with an iron. And then some other things I think you could try to transfer design with an iron using die cuts or the embossing folder. But I do not think you can get a true batik effect, just a basic transfer. And like I said, the best thing that comes out is this beautiful patterned see-through paper and that would make I think that would make a really nice flip or something like that so you'll need some embossing folders your choice It's better to try not to get tears if you want to use this type of thing instead of a transfer. So it's definitely better to double it if you don't want tears. But minimal tears will work for this technique. So you're going to run it through your embossing folder. These are just single layer scraps that I had lying around ran them through once and then I'm going to show you you can also just do a crinkle paper and transfer the texture if you wanted to try something like that and then I just have some uh, white sheets here And I'm going to try it on foam to see if I can get a better transfer. That's one thing I didn't try yet. So I have my foam, have my paper, have my embossed image, I have some ink, and for your benefit, I'm going to use my most juicy colors and dark colors. Now I'm going to go over the embossed side. I personally think that worked better. But you can play around and do what you want. And I'm just going to go over this a couple times. Now, if you're if you are more comfortable taping this down, be my guest because you're going to want to make sure it stays in place. Flip it over. Get your brayer. transfer the ink. Okay, I'm just doing that on white. 
I'm sure you could probably get another off there. But see, even with the iron, with the iron, it's going to transfer the wax. Here's another ghost print. This is also a good way to um, pattern the back of your digitals. With the iron, you're going to get something similar, except this is going to be wax. The design is going to be wax, and then you're going to go over it with ink, and your design will be resist. It will be a resist. So that's the effect when you use, when you um, flip this over and then iron. Surprisingly, it doesn't iron out the emboss, but that's the effect you're going to get, except the blue flowers will be white, and then you'll go over it with ink, and they will pop out. So I'm just going to do another one here. And my embossing folders, embossing folders are probably about the biggest bang for your buck you're going to get. <laughs> um, I use them for printing. I use them for, I can put them in my stamping foam and make stamps. I can make metal effects, I can make painting effects, I can transfer, I can print, I can laminate, I can... My embossing machine and embossing folders are money well spent in my humble opinion. And it's always gratifying. always gratifying especially if you do, well that one that one shifted a little but that's okay yes I do think you get a better transfer if you put some foam in the back definitely so there's that one I got a new a new embossing folder. Oh, I love it. Absolutely love it. And I'll do that one next. I'm going to be doing so much with this embossing folder. It's right up my alley as far as design. Oops, I got a tear and I'm catching that tear a little bit. So again, if you don't want to tear, double it up before you emboss. Very pretty. Very pretty. I think it depends on the folder and the design. What kind of effect you're going to get. Um, let me go over. This leaf one is pretty. Let me try that with a blue. So so you can see it. Make sure I get my right 
right side here. Let me try purple. Some of my, whoops, see I got a tear. Some of my um, inks are more juicy than others. This is, these, these are colors I rarely use. Got another tear, but it's okay. Again, if you don't want this to shift and you want a more perfect transfer, tape it down, hinge tape it, and hinge tape your paper. Okay, it's pretty. So, Moving on, if you want to keep this paper and not have the ink coming back off, just take another piece and glue it on top. That is this one. This one. You can see it kept the white. It didn't smear. That's that one. It has another layer glued on top and actually another layer glued on the back for strength. So that's a triple layer and the the this colored one is sandwiched in between them basically. So for the ironing technique, one thing you might try, take your die cuts to your iron, transfer the die cut design to the paper, go over it with ink. I didn't have time to try that. If you want this effect, which is beautiful. I mean, I'll be keeping all of these and sealing them. And I'm going to seal them. <clears throat> I didn't bring it with me. I forgot. I'm going to seal it with acrylic gloss. I have one little piece left here. And that's what I did. The ink will not come off if you seal it. Or you can use stays on and then it won't come off. And then you have your vellum type colored wax paper. And it really is beautiful. I mean, <laughs> there's no doubt about it. But, um, you know, it's going to have its limitations. But again, if you use stays on, if you want to use it for an envelope, bag, pocket, you're definitely going to have to strengthen it in some way, in my opinion. I mean, okay, I've seen, I've seen people make wax, I've made them myself, and I've seen people make wax paper bags, but they do not, they do not live up to wear and tear. Eventually, they just um, wrinkle, and the more they wrinkle, the weaker they get. The weaker they get, the more they're likely to tear. So, that's about it. Um, oh, I think, I think I've explored the wax paper. I love wax paper, but I think I've explored it about as much as, I, as I'm capable of exploring it at this time, unless I think of something else. 
and I think that'll probably be it for the wax paper series for the time being, but I've come up with a lot of little things that I am definitely going to keep using in the future. And how um, it's always sitting right here beside me for one use or another in the craft room, so. I'm always left with wax paper scraps and whatnot, so I don't, I don't foresee that it's, um, I don't foresee it leaving the craft room anytime soon. <laughs> and if I can wait, find a way to use up the, the scraps of it and create something, see what I mean, I'm still sitting here with a pile another pile so okay everyone have a great day have a great week keep exploring keep creating I'll see you next time bye